Good evening, everyone. Again, I want to welcome you to this vlog or this video or this uh, Facebook Live. I, uh, the, I just want to re-emphasize that the reason I am doing this is to review myself of the doctrines from the Bible. And because I read in Matthew 13, 19, Jesus himself says that those who don't understand doctrines will be taken away by the enemy. So I want to understand the doctrines by myself. And if anybody will benefit by me doing it live, then that is uh, added value. So, our topic tonight, my friends, is about millions fooled by a myth from Saturday to Sunday. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins, we humble ourselves, Lords, without you, we are nothing and we cannot do nothing and we cannot understand anything. We totally depend on you, Lord. Please send the Holy Spirit to be with us as we study your word. Help us to be humble. Give us wisdom and understanding to do your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go. In uh, about 350 BC, philosopher Aristotle from Greek said that the spider had six legs. For the next 20 centuries, they believed that the spider has six legs. Nobody bothered to count and learn that in actuality, the spider actually had eight legs. That was a myth. Another myth has more consequences. In the 18th century, doctors thought that letting of blood, reducing your blood, draining the blood from the patient's body, healed people. So, the first president of the United States, George Washington, he actually died after two liters of water, almost two liters of water were removed from his veins because he had a sore throat. That's another deadly myth. Could it be that there are religious myths also? Huh? Could it be that there are religious myths in the Christian church? Could it be that it's more important than spider or something about health? In our last lesson, we learned that the seventh day is the Sabbath. But how come so many people worship or think that the Sabbath is Sunday? So many textbooks are teaching that spiders have six legs, but they did not count. It's actually eight. Is it... Uh, so let us actually see what is the truth, okay? Because myths are dangerous and especially religious myths are very dangerous. It cannot only cost our temporal life but also our eternal life. So let's go and study. Who is the truth? It is Jesus. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, so we are studying about God's plan for us, for our life. Jesus gave us a special day each week. It is the Sabbath day, so that we can remember that He is our Creator. And we also learned that it will be still keep kept until the world ends and until heaven. The question in our mind, in your mind maybe, is how come so many people think the Sabbath is on Sunday? This Sabbath 
is a reminder that God created the world. Okay? So, let's see in the Bible. There are cautions. Deuteronomy 40 says, Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I give you. So we should not change God's commands because God's commands don't need to be updated. They are perfect. Matthew 5, 17-19 to 19 says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. Even Jesus himself, being God, being the greatest prophet, he said he does not change the law. Why? Because the law is perfect. Jesus himself says he cannot change and he will not change the law. How come other people or organizations want to change the law? I did not come to destroy the law but to fulfill. For assuredly I say unto you, this is Jesus himself talking, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot, not one jot, or one detail will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Excuse me. Let me try to fix something about the audio. It's okay. So Matthew 5, 17 to 19 says, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't mean those false teachers are going to the kingdom of heaven. It just means that those people in the kingdom of heaven will call the false teachers least. Luke 4.16 says, so he came to Nazareth. Even Jesus demonstrated this when he was here on earth. He, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read Luke 4.16. So, when uh, Jesus was talking with the Pharisees, Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So if you are human, if you are a man, the Sabbath is for you, my friend. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Who made the Sabbath? God. Therefore, whatever Jesus does on the Sabbath, we can do. Whatever Jesus did not do on the Sabbath, we should not do. Because Jesus, the Son of Man, is Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus also predicted and expected the people in the last days to keep the Sabbath. In Matthew 24, 20, he said, And pray that your flight may, be not, may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. He was, Jesus was speaking about what would happen when they needed to escape Jerusalem around AD 70 when it was almost captured. Luke 23, 54 to 56 says, That day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near. What are, why are we reading this? Because the question maybe other people will think of, how, how are we sure that the Sabbath during Jesus' time is also the Sabbath during today, during this time? That's very easy. We just read the Bible. The Bible has answers to all our questions. That day was the preparation day. That was Friday. And the Sabbath was drawing near. And the women who come with him from Galilee followed after. And they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. And they rested on the Sabbath. 
according to the commandment. Okay, they know the commandment to rest on the Sabbath. So they did not put oil and fragrant things in Jesus' body because it was already Sabbath. They went there on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. So, most of the Christian world know that there is a Good Friday in memory of Christ's death. Also, most know that there is Easter Sunday that is in memory of Christ's resurrection. So, the question is, what is in the middle of Friday and Sunday, Easter Sunday and Good Friday? Of course, it's the Sabbath. It is the according to the commandment which the women were trying to follow. So if we know when Jesus died, we know when Jesus rose, then we know when, when Jesus rested. And we know when is the rest day, according to the Bible. Very easy. <clears throat> okay, how about after Jesus went to heaven? Huh? Did the disciples uh, change the day? No. Acts 13, 14 says, They went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Luke 13, 14. In Acts, uh, no, that's not Luke, that is Acts 13, 14. In verse 42 and 48, uh, 44, When Jesus were gone out, when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. <clears throat> and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So, it was their activity, regular activity, to go to church on the Sabbath. Even long after Jesus had left. Acts 18.4 And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and prepared a persuaded both Jews and Greeks. That is Paul's habit during the Sabbath. Therefore, we see in the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation that there is no command Changing the Sabbath to Sunday. Hmm? Okay. God did not change the Sabbath because it says in Psalm 89.34, My covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. So Jesus, God, doesn't change his word. <clears throat> Another one, even Catholic uh, cardinal said, this is Cardinal James Gibbons, you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Sunday. That is faith of our fathers, page 111 to 112. Another Methodist scholar named <clears throat> Clovis G. Chapel, he made the same point. He said, the reason we observe the first day instead of the Sabbath day, instead of the seventh, is based on no positive command. <clears throat> One will search the scriptures in vain for authority for changing from the seventh day to the first. Therefore, my friends, there is no biblical record of such a change by Jesus Christ or his disciples. So how did it start? <clears throat> we read from Socrates Scholasticus, a 5th century historian. 
he says, all churches, almost all churches throughout the world celebrate the sacred mysteries, which is the Lord's Supper, on the Sabbath of every week. Yet the Christians of Alexandria and Rome, on account of some ancient tradition, have ceased to do this. Okay. So some Christians ceased to do that. Why? Because of some tradition. Uh -huh. So if you look further into history, you will uh, find out that <clears throat> during that time, about 70 to 135 A.D., there was many there were many rebellions between the romans and the jews and the christians wanted to distance themselves from the jews that's why they started to avoid keeping the sabbath so that they might not be identified with the jews but that is not a good decision <clears throat> It says, impressive indication suggests that Sunday observance was introduced at this time in conjunction with Easter Sunday as an attempt to clarify to the Roman authorities that Christian distinction from Judaism. So they were trying to avoid the connection between the Jewish nation, but they forgot also what was written in God's word. <clears throat> in fact, Romans uh, was written by Paul. Paul was telling the people in Rome, I am talking to you Gentiles. That means that the Romans are actually not Jews. They are people who came into the church. That's why these people were not very good Sabbath keepers because they did they did not grow up as Jewish people. So they were not very strong <clears throat> and they were influenced. So why was Sunday chosen rather than some other week? Why not Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday? This is the reason. <clears throat> because the pagan Roman Empire had been sun worshippers they celebrate sun day as the sun god's day so they wanted to be uh, trying to be friendly with the pagan rome that's why they started to celebrate also on the same day of course that was gradual first the Christians referred to Sunday as a holiday more than a holy day. And both were observed, Saturday and uh, Friday, uh, Sunday. But gradually the day was already, the day that was already popular feast day became the more prominent seventh day observance and seventh day Sabbath observance was forgotten or almost forgotten it says in the apostolic constitutions chapter 23 the apostolic church stood firm and true but when the second and the third generation christians came along we see evidence of compromise and apostasy this started to erode the church's purity <clears throat> in AD 321, Roman Emperor Constantine March 7. That is the first civil Sunday law passed by Roman uh, Constantine. <clears throat> so he was still a pagan. He said that on the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest. They were to rest on Sunday and let all workshops be closed in the country. 
it be closed. However, in the country, the people in agriculture can work. That was according to Constantine in history of the Christian Christian Church. What else? Another gradual thing. In the year 325, Sylvester, the Bishop of Rome, <coughs> changed the title of the first day, calling it the Lord's Day. Oh, so it's made by many different people in um, many different years in a span of time. The Council of Laodicea held in AD 364 gave this ruling. Christians shall not judaize, judaize, that means keeping the seventh day Sabbath, and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. Okay, so the church started to make their own policies in contradiction with the Bible. <clears throat> but the Lord's Day, they shall especially honor. And as being Christians, shall, if possible, do no work on that day. In fact, they, they tried to destroy the people who keep the Sabbath. They said, as the prophets of Antichrist, those who maintain that work ought not to be done on the seventh day. That's how they tried to transfer the sanctity. But of course, that's just their try. What God made holy, no man can change. The reason that happened is because they hid the Bible from the people. When they hid the Bible, then people didn't know what was the truth. But after many centuries, there came the Protestant Reformation when they started to read the Bible. And many people started to question the teachings of the church because they read the Bible. So the, some many reformers had this idea of the Bible and the Bible only as the basis of our faith and practice. Many people died because of this, like Jerome and other people where they were burned. But the truth was coming out. <clears throat> it was not only the Sabbath that the Christians uh, lost. There were other things like salvation and baptism, etc. But you know, God's word cannot be changed. It will stay there and it will be exposed someday. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her division, divine mercy, Change that day from Saturday to Sunday. <clears throat> okay, let's read the Catholic Catechism. Which is the Sabbath day? Answer. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. Because the church, Catholic church, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Really? How can they transfer what God did not do? So, what happened? When people read the Bible, they realized the truth about salvation. And Martin Luther was one of the examples. They said, we must follow the Bible and the Bible only. And challenge many of the truths that were being taught before unbiblical truths. In the Council of Trent, they finally made it uh, plain. They concluded, according to H. H. Holzman, <clears throat> this is the summary. Finally, at the last opening of the 18th of January 1562, all hesitation was set aside. Set aside. The Archbishop of Reggio 
made a speech in which he openly declared that tradition stood above scripture. So because they could not reconcile what they were teaching with the Bible, therefore they said that what our teachings are more important than the Bible. Then, that's the problem. <clears throat> Matthew 15, 3-9 says, Why do you transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? Okay, so we have to be careful about our own laws and policies when they contradict the Bible. And he added, In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So, which are more important in our lives? God's commandments or our own ideas? Our own commandments? It was the Catholic Church that decided Sunday should be the day of worship for Christians. In honor of the resurrection. You see, they are still trying to connect it to the Bible. But it is directly contradicting God's commandments. <clears throat> Another statement that will uh, contribute here. It says, perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change that the church ever did happened in the first <clears throat> century. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday. Not from any directions noted in the scriptures, but from the church's sense of its own power. Really? So you, they think they were powerful, they changed what God's law was. People who think that the scriptures should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists. Oh, this is according to the Catholic Church. And keep Saturday holy. So my friend, if you think the Bible and the Bible should be followed only. Whatever church you are belonging to, even the Catholic Church document says that if you want to believe only the Bible, you should become a Seventh-day Adventist. So what, what is the prophecy about how come this happened? Yeah? Actually, it's in the Bible. In Daniel 7.25, it says that the little horn would think to change times and laws, which is the commandment that has a time. Only the Sabbath. Times and laws. They think they can change it. Of course they cannot change it. How about in the last days? Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So in the last days, there will be people who keep the commandments of God. My friend, if you believe in Jesus as your Savior, we should follow Him to prove that we believe Him. Because He loves us. He wants to save us. He gives commandments for our benefit. 1 John 5.3 says, This is love for God, to obey His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. Do you love God? Obey His commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. Why? Because we love God. Matthew 7.21 says, Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. So my friend, what do you think? What is in the Bible? Huh? We should keep the Sabbath holy according to the commandment. We should spend time with God to study His word to do what Jesus did, he stood up and read, read in the synagogue. And I hope you consider following God's commands. Let's pray. 
Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the truth straight from the Bible, reflected by scholars, by history, by so that history follows prophecy. And we see that there are people who will keep the commandments in the last days who are going to heaven. Give us wisdom and understanding spiritually, Lord, so that we can keep your commandments. Bring us from all our sins in the past. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.